Happy New Year. It is your friend in flowers, Lisa Mason Ziegler, and welcome to the Gardener's Workshop Live Shopping Show. And we have a great show lined up for you today, um, and I'm so glad that you're here. And it's kind of like we haven't done this for three weeks, right? So I'm so happy to be back here with you. So today's show, we are sharing about the deal of the day. Oh, so, hmm, we're having issues, so does this, no, it's cleared up. okay, all right, friends, so today's show, we are sharing um, a lot of fun stuff, we have a deal of the day, and friends, this is the most perfectly timed deal, it's the seed sale, our entire seed category here inside the app is 20% off. Just remember, that's in-app only for in-stock only while supplies last. Um, and this special, as usually in all of our specials here in the app, are available until Sunday at 8 a.m. Eastern Time or until supplies run out. Um, so we're going to be doing some tips and troubleshooting for indoor seed starting for very early spring. We've already got a start on it, and I'm going to get you going, too. We're doing soil blocking and seeding demonstrations, and I'm going to be using our small and our large blocker, kind of just showing how I make those and kind of how I use them. Um, and just a reminder, friends, we still have a few of those 2023 seed grab bags that are, they're mystery bags. They're six, ba um, six packets in a bag. And friends, they are so deeply discounted. These are all the seeds that I'll be starting this year. There is nothing wrong with them except we packed them for 2023 and we still have them. Go and check them out in the app. We're going to be showing you some of our dried flowers. I mean, look at this new set. Is this just not beautiful? Look at all that eucalyptus coming down from the ceiling. Um, so we're doing our dried flowers. And of course, I'll be doing a prize drawing um, for you in-app viewers um, who are watching live. And remember, we are continuing our live Q&A at the end of the show. So if you want to um, get, if you have a question, you can just type at Lisa in the comments um, and type your question and the girls will gather those and I'll pick a few of them at the end of the show to actually um, give them do my best anyway, right, to answer. And I understand we're having some technical difficulties with streaming. So if you're hearing me but not seeing me, um, let us know in the comments what you're experiencing. Um, so before we get started, we I would love it if you would hit that share button on the bottom right-hand side of your screen and let your friends know that we're live and invite them to come over and actually join us. And um, also, friends, guess what we did? Um, we launched a special bundle course um, bundle last earlier this week, the Trio. And it's my course, Dave's course, and Stephen Gretel's. And guess what? We have brought it back out for two more short days. Just we had a great response to it and lots of discussion. So it's back out through Saturday, um, January 13th. Um, when you purchase it, you get instant access to all three of our school courses. You get unlimited lifetime access. You get to, um, you can choose to become a member of our three separate private Facebook groups. Um, and friends, this trio, this was like an introductory offer. We've never put the three of us together before. It was an introductory offer. Um, you save $590. You're basically getting one of the courses for free. It's $1,495 for all three of our courses. Friends, that is really a deal. And you can find all of that over at the Gardener's Workshop Dot com. Um, it's over on our website in a yellow banner at the top of each of the pages. Um, so check that out. And I invite I hope I see you in school because that's really the deal of a lifetime. Now, I don't know if you caught me last night on social media. I came home from the office yesterday to a wonderful surprise. And that was a little, pa oh, that was marking a page. Oh. <laughs> I came home to a little thin package on my front porch, and I opened it up on social media last night, and friends, look, it is my new book. This is the author's copy, the, the copies 
for sale are not available yet and they won't be probably for about eight more weeks. Um, this is just the one copy that I get and I just can't even tell you how beautiful it is. It's hardback, um, 240 pages. And I had, you know me, my, I am so fickled about everything. My current favorite picture, Steve and I picked this out last night. Our favorite photo at this moment right now is this one of me and Tucker. Y'all, I, I could tell you 200 other favorites at this point in time. If you want to pre-order the book, there is still some available for pre-order. So we only get a certain number guaranteed that we're definitely getting when they actually come. Um, and so pre-order because you instantly get access to my Cool Flower Zone Guide. It's a download. Um, and you get that immediately when you purchase it. As well as when the book ships, we also give you um, the flowers that didn't make the book. There's a few flowers that we just couldn't fit in. And if you want to purchase it as a gift, like for Valentine's Day, on your receipt, there is this link to have this download that tells that you can give it as a gift. Um, and I would just love to sign a book for you. So this, we're just kind of smitten over here with it. And we're so proud, too, of Suzanne's images. You know, Suzanne had to stand in for the photographer who had a death in his family. And two of her beautiful images actually made the back cover. That's pretty big, y'all, in the photography world. So we're pleased. So check it out and pre-order it over on the website. You cannot order that here inside the app. Oh, let me show it again. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you my favorite picture again. I'm sorry we're having glitchy problems. So that's it. Me and Tuck sitting in front of our 16-foot cutting garden beds. There you go, Kelly. All right, so now let's do a little bit of housekeeping, right? Um, so if you, when you register here in the app to become a customer or if you're already registered, we just appreciate if you update, check out your information and make sure there's no typos. It happens a lot, y'all. And then we can't ship orders or there's an issue. So please um, check your email and your phone numbers there. Um, remember that here in the app, Shipping for seed-only orders is free. If you only order seed packets, they ship for free. Um, the other, if you buy products, there is a cap of $9.95 on shipping here in the app, which is a little bonus on some products, right? And remember, we do ship to all 50 of the United States. So if you happen to be watching this through social media, we just want you to know there is an app that has a much better experience and a lot more features. I never quite, as a non-tech person, y'all, I never understood, well, why would I get their app? Totally different experience when you get a company's app um, because not everything functions the same on a phone, right? So if you are watching on social media, I recommend that you get it. Um, you can find it over in your phone's app store, search Gardener's Workshop. There's features like um, building a favorites list or and a wish list kind of thing. Um, you can watch replays and you can also comment during the show and talk with other people. You know what I mean? We can comment and communicate. So um, you can't do that unless you're inside the app. Um, and friends, also, if we sell out of stuff, which we tend to do every week, um, if you go to put it in your cart and it says sold out, out of stock, get on the wait list, I recommend you get on the wait list because all that means is that when we bring stock over from our big website, potentially, it'll ding you and say, hey, they're back in stock. Um, and so, especially like for the sale going on, um, you don't want to miss out if they bring more stock over of something. Um, and friends, when you, uh, you see all those sunflower emojis going on, those are our students, which we consider family, identifying themselves as such. And we love that. And um, so if you've taken any of our online courses, we love it when you just comment with the emojis, which says, hey, I'm one of y'all. Um, we just really love that. So the giveaway today is $25 gift certificate. It's over there on top of the dried, next to my, there. I'm um, sorry, y'all. I was talking about this earlier somewhere else. So the giveaway today is a $25 store credit. 
and that means that whoever is the lucky winner, and you have to be here to claim it, will have a $25 credit when they go into their cart to check out. So hit, tap the buy button at the top of the screen. You're not buying anything. That's just putting you on the list, and we will pick that winner near the end of the show. So, um, you know, the winner is really all about education, right? I know that I'm personally taking some business courses, online stuff, um, and it's really all about learning more. And um, I just want you all to know that when you order your books from us, my books, um, I sign them all. And um, so we did just get a brand new shipment of cool flowers in. I would love to sign one for you. This is the group of flowers that we're busy starting the seed right now. And this really gives you the lowdown on the cool flower concept um, and lists about 30 of different cool seeds and hardy annuals. Um, and I would love to sign a copy for you. That is $22.95. And then we also have my other book, Vegetables Love Flowers, which friends, this book is not really about growing vegetables. It's about why vegetables love flowers. And it's about a three season cutting garden um, and how that would benefit your vegetables. Um, so this book is really about my style of gardening and farming, how I don't use pesticides. Um, and it has um, 10 of my favorite warm, 10 of my favorite cool, harvesting, conditioning. It even has diagrams in the back to, um, to help you understand succession planting. Um, so that's Vegetables Love Flowers. And we've even put them together as a set. You can get both of them for $48.90, which is a little bit of a savings. Um, and I would sign both of them for you. Or you can actually put in the comments on your purchase if you want me to, to personalize it to somebody, like if you're giving it for a gift. Totally love doing that. So the tip of the day that we're talking about today is seed starting for what I call very early spring. Y'all, I say that because when you say spring, people definitely jump to like after Easter. You know what I mean? Late, Much later in the season. Very early spring um, is the second window of opportunity to plant cool season hardy annuals to benefit from the cool flower concept, right? Um, cool season annuals, cool flowers as we call them, thrive in cool to cold conditions, particularly cold soil. And this is that time, right? Um, and so what this really relieves you of is you should not be starting warm season tender annuals. You know, think zinnias and um, tomatoes and basil. Those are all warm, right? They grow all through the summer. It's not time to start them yet, right? This is the time to start cool season hardy annuals. And our goal is to plant them at very early spring. So when is that? Very early spring is six to eight weeks before your last frost date. So my last frost date is mid-April, classically. So that means I go, let's just say eight weeks before that is mid-February, Valentine's Day. I mean, it is still cold outside. We have snow on the ground sometimes. Um, so that is when you wanna have transplants ready to go into the ground. We don't direct seed at that time of the year. So we're looking to have a three to five inch transplant ready to go when that time rolls around for us. So as a general expectation, and it really depends on your growing conditions, it takes about four to six weeks to go from seed to a nice size transplant, right? Um, so we are gonna, I'm gonna show you how I start my seeds now, but before that, I wanna show you, I've got a lineup of transplants here that I wanna show you. And so I'm gonna show you two first, that it is not the proper time, y'all, to have these ready to roll. It is still way too early, but you know that we start seeds for um, videoing and imaging, but they are so beautiful, I could not just let them go until you had a look at them. So that is, first up, look at these, y'all. These are pepper plants. And they're the most beautiful pepper plants I have ever bloomed and grown. So I wanna just pick one up and I'm just gonna look for one that has just, oh my gosh, the roots, y'all. Look at these roots. These are like, this is, if it was mid-April, these are ready to hit the ground running out in the garden. Soil blocking grows amazing transplants. These were started in the small blocker and then bumped up 
And as I mentioned, it is not time for them yet. These were grown for photography. And look at this, look at the roots. They are not pot bound. So I'm just looking to see how old these are. Four weeks. So this is the perfect size transplant that I would set out for peppers. And the very same thing, if you saw me on social media bumping up those tomatoes, this is them. These are the perfect size. Can y'all wanna smell? That foliage is amazing. So this is not what you should be starting right now unless you live in the deep, deep south, right? But this is what your goal is with starting tomatoes. Started in the small blocker and bumped up, and then these are about four weeks old. So now let's look at some cool flower transplants, which is what we are starting right now. It is the proper time. So first off, this is um, Limbata, which is a brand, a seed that we have been waiting two years for. It's in packaging. If you're gonna, you're gonna see it dried, get on the wait list. But this is them. This is 60 of the small blocks. Um, and you can see just excellent germination. Um, the small tray, which is about six by 11. So you can grow and support 60 plants in this super small spot. So these are about two and a half weeks old. They'll be growing a little bit more. And then look at the status. This status should have been planted about two weeks ago. They're starting to look a little, a little, Suzanne said, don't you wanna take those bad leaves off? You can see a couple of the leaves are starting to turn. Y'all, they just need to be planted. There's nothing you can really do in a tray to really bring this kind of stuff back around, but this is status. This is 60 plants in that little same tray. And you know, it's just so surprising to me how long a transplant will look good in that small little block. Here's some stock that's just being born. Look at that. So this is just 40. This is the smaller tray. This is like eight inches. And so this is stock that was just starting to sprout. And so here are snapdragons that are ready to go to the garden. And this again is 60 plants on this five and a half or six by 11. Um, they're ready to go. And if I was gonna try to save these, I would pinch them in the tray and then wait 10 to 14 days before I planted them. Um, but those are snaps. And then look at this beautiful sweet William. Again, this is 60 plants in this little tray, and these are like ready to go to the garden. They're just absolutely beautiful. And people, I show this over and over again, y'all, because people are always wondering how in the world can you start them in those small blocks? And that's in fact what we do. All right, so Suzanne is gonna put the camera down now, and I am going to demonstrate making, um, some soil blocks. So as you can see here, this is the blocking mix. And it's really a lot wetter than what people ever imagine. That's why I do so much demonstrations of this. And y'all, this is a old potato masher that I use to actually mix with, right? And so this recipe is always on our website um, and you can make it and I'll show you um, it's sifted components. Um, and it's super easy to make and then just keep it on hand and very cost effective. So we mix about one part water to three parts of the blocking mix. And um, you can see it's, it's fairly wet. I mean, there's a little bit of water. This is borderline. I might actually want a little bit more water. Um, Cause what'll happen is when the mix is too dry, it's you have a hard time getting the blocks, thank you to come out of the blocker. So you're far better off to have too much moisture than not enough. So I'm just gonna mix that in and... All right, so this is the small blocker. This is the one that Bobo and I use here in house. You can see it's kind of a mess. And I hold it with both hands and push it down into a nice little pile of that mix. And I usually push it twice. That just helps me to ensure that the chambers are nice and full. So I get a nice little firm block. And I use trays with no drainage holes. And there's several benefits to doing that. Water doesn't get trapped anywhere. And um, there you go, thank you. Um, 
no drainage holes, which means you can do it anywhere inside your home. Again, I'm just gonna push it down into a nice pile. And if you notice, I don't just pull the blocker straight back up, I scrape it to the side because, because it is wet soil, it gets suctioned to actual bottom. So I'm just placing it on the tray and give it a push and a pull. And there you go. So I just made 40 blocks, right? Now I use the small blocker most of the time, y'all. Um, and I, today I chose to start seeds. These are actually marigold seeds and technically it is too soon. However, I just wanna show that even when I'm sowing seeds like marigolds and zinnias um, that are kinda like long, skinny seeds, I literally just poke them in. That is sowing the seed right there. Just poking them in. And these are coated, they're coated with a clay. Um, and that's for counting reasons and lots of processing reasons. And it's not a treatment of any kind. It is simply just clay. And I'm just pushing them. And even though the tail is still sticking out, that is perfectly okay. The majority of the seed is down in the soil because marigolds need to be covered just like zinnias and sunflowers do. And so that provides that. So this marigold will sprout and grow in this small block up into a seedling like what you just saw. But for celosias and snaps and all those tiny little seeds, this is absolutely perfect. Now, the other size block that we have is the two inch. And the only time I use this block is when a seed will either not fit in that small blocker. Think um, zucchini, squash, sunflowers. So I resist using this one unless we really, it is needed because I don't know if you're noticing, but this is gobbling up a lot of soil right? And so I'm going to scrape that off. And again, um, actually, yeah. Again, I'm using a flat bottom tray. And because the soil is wet, um, sometimes if it's really wet, like this is, it suctions. You just have to give it a second. And I just made four two inch blocks that that insert that you see um, that made this hole right here, um, a three quarter inch block will perfectly drop right in there. And that's what had happened with those peppers and those tomatoes that you just saw me do. So eight of these will fit on this tray. So think about two sets of 20. So that's 40 plants of the small one versus just eight of these. So that really, just helps you to see the space savviness of this is so much better and it's less blocking mix. Um, so we use the large blocker for things like sunflowers, zucchini, squash, whenever we're bumping up, um, but not nearly as often as we use the small blocker. So how do these tools become available to you, right? So we actually have created a kit. It's called the Soil Block Maker Kit. And this is the basic kit. It includes the small blocker. It includes five of those um, 11 inch long, this holds three sets of 20, five of the foam trays, the seed pan. Um, the reason we use an aluminum seed pan is it's, it's, there's no static electricity in it. It also includes five, 10 of the plant markers. It includes our toothpick dispenser with two pick, toothpicks for sowing those small seeds, um, as well as it comes with a choice of three seeds, either cool season, which you see here, or you can select warm season. And these are our top selling seeds, y'all. These are customer favorites. So you can pick which one you actually want. And it also comes with the nutrient mix, which you add to your peat moss and your compost. And this will make about six recipes, which translates into 
um, six recipes and about 500 blocks per recipe. So when you add your peat boss and your compost, this will make about 3,000 of those little blocks. Plenty to go around, right? And this is simply just green sand and rock phosphate. That's included. Um, where is the... There it is. And then also in the kit is the Seed Starting Made Easy course. Y'all, this is about a 90-minute course of me taking you from beginning to end on seed starting, which blocker, um, how to use the blockers, how to sow seeds out in the garden. It has everything that you need in it. Um, and you get all of this. For $78.95 along with $9.95 shipping. So that really gets you um, soul block, making soul blocks, right? You can just purchase the small blocker by itself, um, and that is $38.95. And, um, you know, if you don't need some of the other components, that's the way to start. And I will tell you, this is just a tool that'll last year after year. You just add soil and seeds each year. Then there's also available the large blocker, which is $44.95, and that makes four of these two-inch blocks. And you can find in the app also where you can buy a set, potentially, um, of the, the blocking tools. So those are the blockers that will get you started now. Let's talk a little bit more about the soil and the soil mix. Um, because blocking mix is very different than regular seed starting mix. Most seed starting mixes are made to be light and fluffy because you're putting them in a container, right? Blocking mix is the opposite of that. It's very dense. So that's why um, you need a different type. So this is the soil set. It includes the blocking mix, to this is the nutrient to go with your peat moss and your compost. It has the seed pan. It also has the toothpick dispenser, as well as the monitoring cards for fungus gnats um, that captures them and helps you to know when you actually get them. But this is the best part of this whole thing, y'all. This is a sifter. This will fit right onto your five gallon bucket. You dump your peat moss in here, mush it around. You will not believe how many chunks are in there. You want really fine stuff for your seed starting mix. So you get all of these components to help make your soil and then to sow um, for $53.80. You can purchase um, just uh, just the sieve, and it fits perfectly. I can't really show you this this way. Um, this fits really, I guess, should, can we come up maybe? Sure. Yep, so here comes Suzanne's going to move the camera for us because I really wanted you to see this is the part that just really makes this so very convenient. All right, check this out, y'all. The sieve sifter fits perfectly on top of a five gallon bucket, locks in. So you can stand at a table, outdoors I recommend, and sift all of your peat moss and all of your compost. And then I store those sifted components in a container here in the building and just have scoops and make my soil. It is no big deal. So you can purchase the sifter. The bucket is not included. The sifter by itself is $19.95. And I will tell you, this is one of the best tools we ever, ever have added to our farm. All right, so you can also purchase separately if you need it, just the nutrient. Um, so this is $14.95. And again, this is enough to make six recipes. And um, each recipe makes about 3,000, I'm sorry, 500 of those blocks when you add it to your compost and your peat moss. So that is, um, this is what you add to your soil to make that block and mix at home. Um, and something I'm using so much right now, this is our garden marker. I get asked about this all the time. This is made to sustain UV rays and moisture, y'all. So when you write, we write on masking tape, we write on wood, we write on plastic. Um, and then it goes outside. And then if you use a non-outdoor pen, it just disappears. That does not happen with the garden marker. This is $6.95, and it's a fine point. Um, it's pretty fine, if y'all can see that. I mean, you can write 
and read what you're actually writing. Um, we use so many of these around here on the farm. It's just super useful. Now, those trays that you just saw in the kit, um, so these, these are foam, y'all. They are not made to be disposable. We reuse these for years. They come in either a, um, I think this is like eight by five and a half. There's five in a pack for $2.95, or you can get a 25 pack for $12.95. And see, so you don't wanna have bigger trays than the number of blocks you're starting for one type of seed. That's why I use so many different size trays, y'all. This is what we start most of our peppers and our tomatoes on when they're in the small block, because we don't need that many, right? Then we also have the larger one, which actually holds three of those clusters of 20. Um, a five pack is $3.95 and a 25 pack is $15.95. And we just wash them up and reuse them year after year. Now, I talked this week on social media um, that I would talk about why do I use burlap. Um, so I showed a picture of me or a video of me uncovering um, some trays that were on a seedling heat mat in my grow room. Um, I use burlap in place of plastic domes or cellophane or anything like that. Um, the point of those products is to trap the moisture to help moisten the seed that's in your blocks or on in the soil, right? Well, and that works, but they also are very quick to encourage disease if you don't monitor them very closely to really control how much moisture there is. And frankly, friends, I'm not a good monitor. I check my seed room once in the morning, and then they don't see me for 24 hours. Using wide weave burlap allows moisture to be trapped. However, it still allows air to pass through. So it does the same job without so much of the threat. Now, once we start seeing seeds cracking, we remove it because they will quickly pop through these holes, and then when you pull it back, it'll just rip them out. So the wide weave comes in three foot square approximately sizes. You can get one bundle for $3.95 or you can get a three pack for $9.95. And it just helps because so many of the flower seeds that we grow are surface sown that they really need help staying moist. And I just find that the burlap really does a great job. So even when I'm starting warm season tender annuals, I still use a seedling heat mat. I do add another piece to the seedling heat mat. They still need warmth, they don't need hot. So I lay a cookie sheet, a cookie cooling rack. You know what I'm talking about when you take cookies out of the oven, you scoop them off the cookie sheet and put them on a rack. That little rack is exactly what I set on top of my heat mat that creates a small air space between this and the bottom of my trays. It is still consistent 24 seven warmth, but it's not hot. So this is the seedling heat mat which technically will hold three to four of those trays that you just saw me talk about. Um, so, and this is one step in the freight train. This is where we put them right after we sew the blocks. Um, and then once 50% start to show signs of life, we remove them from the heat mat and move them to grow lights. And this is $38.95. Um, it's got a built-in thermostat. And so it stays plugged in 24 seven while you're germinating seeds. All right, so next up is the fertilizer that I use. This is Neptune's Harvest Seaweed Fish, um, and it is a 18 ounce bottle now. And I, you follow instructions when I'm, this is what I put in my watering can for my seedlings um, in the grow room. And so anybody that's off the heat and under a grow light on Mondays gets um, fertilizer in the watering can, right? And I just follow the house plant instructions on here, and I do that once a week. Not every week, but I try to do it every single week if possible. We also use this out in the garden, and I also use it for foliar feeding out in the garden. All that means, friends, foliar feeding is putting it up on the leaves, whether you spray it or pour it on with a sprinkler watering can, depending on what your volume is. Pretty stinky, but we really, really love it. So what we use in our beds when we're preparing soil um, is this organic dry fertilizer. This is based on chicken litter, processed chicken litter. 
Um, it's very general purpose. Um, this is a four pound bag, which is $14.95. And for a 100 square feet, which is 10 by 10, right? You use seven and a half cups or three pounds. Um, so this is what feeds your soil, which is what then in turn takes care of your plants. This makes your soil better and better with each application. Um, and so this is the four pound size and it's $14.95. Um, and that's the only general purpose thing that we add to our soil without a soil test telling us to actually do it. So friends, it's that time of the year that we're starting to think about preparing beds and you may or may not know, I am a huge fan and user of the Bio360 biodegradable film that looks like plastic, but it's not. It's made out of um, a corn byproduct and a bioplastics and it's 100% biodegradable and it's super easy to poke a hole through. It's not like planting a landscape cloth. Um, and we, it comes with um, one side is black and one side is gray and it's either gray or white. And the reason that is depends on what the weather is, the season that you're kind of in. When we're making beds for um, fall and very early spring, we put the black side up because that aids in warming the soil, right? Um, we make the beds and put it down. I put this down by hand for years before I got a bed maker. This this is what allowed me to scale my farm, y'all. It just helps to prevent those early weeds so very, very much. But then once summer starts and we're making beds for warm season tender annuals, we put the light colored side up because that cools the surface of the bed down. Now this is available in, it's the pieces are 48 inches wide, which is for a 30, up to a 36 inch bed, and it's 50 feet long. It comes either in a single pack for $26.95 or you can get a six pack of individual packs for $134.95. I can't tell you what a time saver um, and just really helped me just focus on other things on my farm. Um, so that's the biodegradable mulch. And anyone who was interested in the fertilizer, um, Kelly's putting more in stock right now. Okay, so they're restocking the fertilizer as we speak. It's already sold out. Can you use the Bio 360 for organic gardens? So somebody's just asked, um, can you use it in an organic garden for Bio 360? It is not certified organic. Um, and so it is in many other countries in the world, but not in the United States. Um, so that would be your choice, but that we've used it probably, I think we're going into our 10th year. Um, and so, but it is not certified. Now, the other really important part of very early spring planting for us is floating row cover. And that is because wind is so wispy this time of the year. Floating row cover allows 85% of air sun and water to penetrate it. So we put it in with hoops on it, um, on all of our newly planted stuff. Actually our fall plants go through winter with this on, not for cold protection, but for wind protection to keep varmints from eating, you know, deer from grazing and red squirrels from digging up our stuff. They just don't even realize what's underneath there, right? So this comes in a six and a half foot piece wide, 50 feet long and it's $26.95. Now, over on our big website, not here in the app, we have hoops available and we have longer pieces if you need big 250 or 500 foot rolls. Um, but if you're just getting started out and a 50 foot piece will do it, I have enough row cover. Um, I mean, I just can't even tell you how I attribute that to so much of my success protecting my plants from wind. It's far more damaging than what we ever thought of. And then the way I hold them down is with the weight bags. These are basically sandbags, y'all. We fill them with either gravel, sand, or soil, about 15 pounds. And this is what we set on the row cover to hold them down and um, makes all the difference. You would never use a clip or staples or anything because it will just rip your row covers to shreds. This comes in a 10 pack a 25 pack or a 50 pack, 10.95, 24.95, and 39.95. Um, and they last about 1600 hours out in UV rays and then they start to break down. Um, and remember friends, if you're just joining us to sign up to get on our drawing for the $25 store credit 
and I will be drawing that near the end. Just tap the buy button. You're not buying anything. That's just putting you on the list for the actual giveaway. So if you're just joining us, remember that I'm going to do a little Q&A at the end of the live show. If you have a question you'd like to ask, put it in the comments now. Put at Lisa, and that'll alert the girls to pull it, and we'll pick a few of those. And remember, the deal of the day is 20% off the seed category, y'all. And remember, if you're only buying seeds, it's free shipping on top of that. So let's talk about seeds and proper storage. Um, we use the desiccant packs. These absorb moisture. Keeping your seeds dry and cool are the two things that just keep seeds good for a long, long time. Um, so you can get a two pack for $2.95 or a 10 pack for $9.95. And friends, remember, I'm using the same seeds here on my farm that you're actually buying from us. We literally pull our seeds. Bobo, we make the, the calendar, she makes the list. We go to the warehouse and pull them. Um, so I'm starting those very, very same seeds. And if you're gonna store them, use the desiccant packs. And remember, um, this year, there's still some of those 2023 mystery grab bags that are available and they are 70% off. Y'all remember, I only sell the seeds that like the same flowers that I grow. So they're all great seeds and they're 70% off. So go and check those out. So now I wanna talk about what we're starting now for cool flowers. But we're starting it off with one warm. It's the only warm thing that I'm starting at this time of the year. And that, my friends, is eucalyptus. Can you see all this that's hanging up above my head? We have so much gorgeous dried eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is a warm season tender annual. Some people can winter it over, um, but it is a super slow grower. So we start that at the very first of January. So this is the eucalyptus silver dollar. The seed is available, grab it now if you want it. Um, and this is the lighter colored one with the larger leaf. Really love eucalyptus. And what we've got a bunch of trays of in there is straw flowers. Now, this is the mix. However, you can find all of these individual colors um, in the app separately. As a matter of fact, you can see just a few of them right here, um, but you can grow solid colors or you can grow the mix. Straw flowers are the silent, I mean, the flower that nobody talks about. It is a huge contributor to our bouquet program. And y'all, they dry beautifully. Look how they hold their color. So that's the king size mix. And then this, which is not in the mix, this is the peach. Um, so I think it's called peach mix. Um, and this is another, I mean, peach fuzz is the color of the year, right? Um, so this is the peach. And I will tell you for straw flowers, we start starting them now. And I re we start them every four weeks for about two or three more times. So we have them all summer long. They're really beautiful. And we just had to show you this one. This is the creamy white um, straw flower. This is just, it's so beautiful fresh but I think it is just really beautiful dried also. So that is the creamy white straw flower. And as I mentioned, you can find all the other colors individually here in the app. Um, and then also we're looking at the Seeker mix, but I just have, this is one of the blues that's here. You can also see here, it's in yellow um, and it, it, there's white and peach, or it's kind of like a pinky rose. Um, the Seeker Mix status, um, you can see how, look how great, y'all, this is like a year old. Look how great that color is. And so the Seeker Mix has all of the colors, the pink and the white and the yellows and the blues and the purples, or you can buy the individual colors. Um, and I will tell you, it is a huge bouquet staple for us. And I think this is probably the prettiest bunch of dried flowers. Suzanne and I agree on this that we've ever had. Look at this. I hope it translates on. This is Ami Magus, y'all. And I just can't even tell you how incredibly beautiful and delicate and gorgeous. This would be so gorgeous in a vase all by itself. So this is Ami Magus. Um, and we're starting that now. Um, we also had planted this in the fall. But this is really, really beautiful. 
And then in that same kind of humble family, this is dill. And again, it's just got these great seed heads. Um, and you know, when you're making, what you think about dried flowers is 100% dependent on what you're gonna do with the dried flowers. If you're making wreaths in November, all this stuff is incredibly useful. If you don't know what you're gonna do with dried flowers, it could be a challenge. So that's part of the process. But this dill, and it still smells like dill, y'all. It is so good. And then here is one of our favorite. If you are not growing a mobium, this is like a mix between feverfew and straw flowers, y'all. It's white, it's tiny, it sounds like straw flowers. Um, we grow this in the fall and very early spring. It's an amazing fresh bouquet filler, but it is a pretty awesome dried flower also. And here's one that there's always a flower that surprises me when it dries. This, my friends, is Sorinthi. And it may not look too impressive right now, but it's blue. Can y'all see that? The light just went perfect for it. You just don't get this color. This is Sorinthi. And this is an amazing fresh cut, even before it blooms, then when it's in bud, then when it's in bloom. And then if you have anything left over, you dry it. This is like my favorite new cool flower. So that is Sorinthi, which you would be starting now. And then look at this little baby. Billy balls. So Billy, look how great he holds his color. Craspedia, I will tell you, this is deer bait. You gotta protect it if you're gonna put it outside where you don't have deer protection. Um, but these are like little, they're like yarrow, the yellow coronation gold yarrow. Um, but this is Craspedia and it holds its color beautifully and you can never ever have enough of that. So I showed you earlier those Lombata transplants. We haven't had Lombata seed for two years to sell. I've had seed. Well, we had it grown for us, y'all. This is what it looks like dry. The seeds in packaging, get on the wait list if you wanna get some of this seed because it'll go through the wait list before we ever get to offer it publicly. Um, this is a bee balm, it's a Monarda, and it's different than any one you've ever grown. The bees love it, you're gonna love it. So this is Monarda Lombata, and it is even gorgeous dried. How tall it is, that's what I noticed. Oh yeah, it's super tall. <laughs> and Suzanne and I whacked half the stems off of these. I mean, it's just a really great plant. And here's one of my favorite drieds. So y'all, do you know what this is? This is safflower. This is Carthamus. And not only, it's just like Sorinthi. We use it as a filler before it even shows any color. I mean, so it's really useful early in the season to go along with your cool flowers. Then once it starts to bloom, it's gorgeous. And then it is such a sturdy dried flower. We saw it. We went and toured Colonial Williamsburg, um, the crew did, and looked at wreaths on doors. You know, that's what they're really famous for, their dried wreaths. So much of this, because it's just such a sturdy one. So this is a great one to start. And then you know that I'm a really big fan of Feverfew. So this is the Vegmo, that's not Sunny Ball. Wait, this is yellow. This is White Wonder. Where is that? Here it is. Here it is, y'all. Sunny Ball. I'm not going to pull it out of there. That's Sunny Ball, which is kind of like a white with a yellow cast. Um, and then the next one we have is White Wonder. I need that one too, Suzanne. This is White Wonder. That's the white double that's yellow. It's not that anymore. Oh, I thought we had it on there. Okay. Sorry, y'all. Um, this is White Wonder. That's the one that's like the real double, real white, real fluffy one. It's the strongest germinator and the strongest grower of all of them. So, and it dries pretty well too. It's pretty neato. And then I absolutely love what we call the single. It's the one that looks like the little daisy, like a little teeny daisy. Super casual, great for filler. And so it dries pretty well too. You get to actually looks a little bit better up here. You know, when you see variation in our stuff, like the difference between this side and this one, it's staged to harvest when it got dried. That's what the difference is. 
Um, but this is the white daisy one. We never had enough of that. Our commercial customers loved them just as much as we did for making bouquets. And then look at the summer berries yarrow, y'all. Totally love this. I mean, it just really keeps that kind of lavender purple look. Really, really beautiful. Um, and that is such a useful kind of filler flower um, in the spring. So, um, remember to stick around for my little Q&A. I'm going to do that after I give you some wrap-up notes here. Um, and It was kind of blurry. People couldn't see your picture. So, oh, so let's show it again. Sure. So, everybody's it's asking. Still blurry. Oh, no. <laughs> Somebody said just reconnected. But... Yeah. So, sorry about that, y'all. Um, so... The book, get on the pre pre order so that you get the cool flower zone guide. And you can only order this through the website. It's not available here um, in the in the um, app. And oh my gosh, y'all. I just mm, 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 I just love looking at it. It's just really, really beautiful. Um, so thanks for being patient with us. I mean, technology is kind of crazy, right? So um, is, can, do they still have time to get on? Sure. Yeah, so you still have time to enter for the giveaway. So Susie will put that up, and if you just tap the buy button, then that will help you. Um, that'll just put you on the list. You're not buying anything, y'all. Um, and so just remember that over on our big website, thegardenersworkshop.com, we have a lot of free resources, videos, blogs, podcasts, um, just a lot of stuff to really be helpful to you. Um, and remember, we have two podcasts, Field and Garden um, and Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. And you can find both of those wherever you're listening to podcasts. Um, and remember that we host Ask a Flower Farmer on Instagram every Wednesday at 1230, which is another place you can get your questions answered. Um, we have different hosts coming through um, as well as I'm there. And so, and then remember... We're back on Fridays, so the live show will be um, back every Friday at 12 noon Eastern time, and I'll just be sharing kind of what's going on here on the farm and sharing some of our beautiful flowers, and I can't wait for the season to start. Um, and so, friends, we have a winner for our $25 gift certificate. And so I hope you're here because you have to be here to claim it, and I just love giving stuff away, y'all. So, Kim Miles, if you're here, Kim, you are the winner of the $25 store credit here in the app for the Gardener's Workshop. And so, give us a big old shout out. As soon as you um, shout, Kelly will credit it to your account in just a few minutes. Um, we totally love that. So, um, stick around for the live Q&A. Um, or thanks for joining us if you're not going to stick around. And here. Oh, Kim's here. Congratulations, Kim. So when you go to check out, you'll have a $25 store credit that'll be just taken off the top of your order. Um, so we just love giving stuff away. Um, so let's take a look at some questions here. So what soil mix do you use for starting sunflowers? That's a great question. Um, so we do not use blocking mix. Um, we just take regular potting soil and mix it 50-50 with finished compost. We typically just buy a bag of potting mix and a bag of compost and mix them. And that just makes the potting soil is one of the most expensive things on our farm, you know I mean? Because you're constantly using it, right? Um, so we mix those and that just helps it retain moisture. So what kind of compost do you use in your soil blocking mix? That's another great question. So the real answer to that is any compost will work, but what needs to, it needs to be is finished compost. That's what a lot of us don't understand, and I didn't get back in the beginning. Finished means that it's completely broken down and processed. Um, that means it doesn't have a smell. I mean, I've used cow manure compost, leaf mold compost, worm casting compost, mushroom compost, 
steer, compost, all of those different basics for compost with different ingredients. But the key is that it has to be fully processed. And that's another reason that you sift it, is to get those chunks out and that there won't be any big chunks of stuff still left in there. So any of those work really well. Um, and we really like worm castings. That works really, really well also. Um, so, and you, um, we buy it because we don't typically have finished, ready, perfect compost, most often readily available for us. Um, so you can check that out and see what you can find. First year for scabiosis, any tips? So scabiosis, um, we fall and very early spring planted and we just have gangbuster results. It tends to be a strong grower when it's really planted. It's a cool season hardy annual, um, the one that we grow, and it does really well. It gets super tall. Bumblebees really love it, so you have to, we like to cut it when only a third of the little flowers are open because it's a little button. That's why they call it a pincushion flower. Um, so when a third of those flowers open is when we cut it, um, and it, it definitely benefits from netting because it is so tall, and if you net it properly, it's really easy to cut through. Um, so do you start lisianthus on heat? Well, we don't start lisianthus seeds, um, typically. We, I have, um, but we buy plugs. And yes, lisianthus is very temperature sensitive, not just to get it to germinate. The getting it to germinate is not the challenge with lisianthus, which is what a lot of people are under that impression. It's like once they think they've gotten it to germinate that they're over the hump, but that's not the challenge. The challenge is that it's an incredibly slow grower. It takes 12 to 16 weeks to get a transplant that big. That's three to four months, y'all. And it needs like air and soil temperature at like 70 degrees. And if it gets much over that, um, you can really make the plants drop into what's called rosetting later in their life, which means they will never produce stems. They just get beautiful foliage. Um, and I call it the lisianthus grudge. Um, they just, they're troublesome. So it's very difficult to maintain all of that for so long. That's why I learned that, you know, growers buy plugs. It's not that we can't grow them. It's just that it's less expensive in the long run with a better end result. Um, so lisianthus, when we started them, yes, we started them just like we do other cool season hardy annuals on a cookie cooling rack on a seedling heat mat. All right, I am new to cool flowers. I did not prepare my beds in the fall. Could I make raised flower beds now and cover them? I'm in 7B, 8A. So, um, good. Well, if you have figured that part out, being new to cool flowers, you are lay, leagues ahead of most people to recognize that perhaps you might have missed the optimal time. So, what she's referring to is we recommend even these beds that we're getting ready to plant in mid February, that those beds for us were prepared last fall. The reason being this time of the year, the soil is wet, sometimes frozen, sometimes covered in snow. It's not the time you want to be disturbing your soil, right? Um, so whether you could make beds now or not really depends on what it is you're going to do. Now, when you're saying, could I make raised flower beds, if you're talking about just building a bed on top of existing soil and not messing with what's down there, for sure you can do that. Um, and <clears throat> just mulch them and get them ready to receive transplants when you're very early spring to planting time is. Um, but that's the big challenge is, and I would say that if you didn't prepare your fall beds and you want to plant and you're not really wet right now, but maybe you're calling for snow and rain, if you put a silage tarp down where it may not be super wet yet, but you're scared it will get wet before you can prepare, a silage tarp will help with that. That can really help that. When should I start fertilizing nigella and bupleurum in the field? They're really growing. I'm in North Florida with last frost date mid-March. Great, great question. Um, so when, so we prepare our beds, we add that organic fertilizer, that the dry fertilizer that we talked about earlier in the show. We add that at recommended, um, according to the directions, right? So our plants 
have food ready and waiting in the soil. I typically, because we have really great soil here, I mean, I've been building it for a long time, we don't always do another fertilization. I'm not saying it wouldn't benefit, I'm just saying we don't. But if you needed to or wanted to, it's once the plants start growing and showing growth happening is when you can feed them according to directions. I don't think of nigella and bupleurum as heavy feeders, but if you have really lean soil, meaning it's not real, it's not got a lot of nutrition, you might want to do that. Just wait until they show growing and they are really growing, you're there already, right? How many plants do you plant in a 20-foot row? I'm having a hard time estimating how many seeds to start. That is a really great question that many people face, and it comes down to math, right? So, how wide is your bed? How many rows is going in that bed? And then in those individual rows, how far apart are your plants going to be planted? That's the equation you need to figure out. For me... I put four rows in a 30 inch bed and within those rows, the plants are six inches apart. So literally that's what I figure out. The way I do it, because I'm kind of a numbers person, is like, all right, there's four rows in a 10 foot bed. So that means there's really 40 foot of row, right? And if there's a bed, a plant every six inches, I just do the math that way. And then when I go to start seeds, we normally are starting almost twice as many seeds as plants that we need because stuff happens, y'all. Not every seed germinates. Not every one of them is a stellar transplant. A puny transplant, I don't even want to plant it outside. I don't want to give it space. We have very limited space on my farm. So when we plant, when we start a tray of 240 snapdragons, potentially only 150 of them maybe are getting planted. The rest of them go to the compost heap and they are contributing. We want only stellar transplants being planted because we know that healthy transplants planted into well-drained, healthy soil outproduce more stem length, more abundance, they're in more disease and pest resistant. Jenny Love and I had a great talk about that on the No-Tell Flowers podcast. Not this last time, we just have a new podcast that just came out this week which she references the number of this one. Um, and so you don't want to be planting, you do not want to be doing CPR on transplants when you're a commercial grower. Put them in a heap and start planting something else there, okay? Zone 7B, predicting a full seven days of 20s and into single digits. How can I protect my beds that have been planted? Can you give some suggestions for saving these babies? So the big question is, are you saying that these are your fall planted transplants? They should be established, right? If you're only growing what is winter hardy in your zone and they're gonna be facing those temperatures, established transplants, meaning you didn't just plant them two weeks ago. You plant, see it's like the right time of year, right? You should have either planted last fall when the conditions were conducive to that or we're planting in very early spring when we're kind of coming out of that type of behavior, right? Um, so if you're worried, you, those, that's true for you, but you're still worried, double row covering them, you know, hoops for sure, hoops and row covers, because that just really concentrates the heat and protects them from the wind. Um, but that's the biggest issue I see people facing is planting at the wrong time, and then facing adverse weather conditions and wondering why their transplants die, that's not what cool flowers are designed to do. You're to plant them at the proper time, which establishes them to face the adverse condition, and they come through that. All right, this is the last question. If a seed says needs light to germinate, I know that means to sow on top, but does that ever mean they need grow lights as well? or can they be just on heat mats until emerging then move to grow lights? To my knowledge, when it says needs light to germinate, it does not need a grow light, it just needs light. And most, what I have learned is that in fact, 
that needs light term usually means it needs to be on the surface because it also needs a lot of great oxygen to be able to germinate. So no, they're on seed starting heat mats appropriately and um, no grow lights. So friends, we are wrapping it up. Um, today and thanks so much for joining me remember to share us with your friends remember the specials are available until monday sunday at 8 a.m eastern time or until you know supplies run out of whatever it is seeds 20 percent off through the weekend only, ne on the app. only on the app what did i say no, I, people were oh about that. yeah Okay, so that's, this is only available inside the app. Y'all, our app and our website are two totally different stores. So this special is only available here in the app. And remember, seed only orders ship for free inside the app. So now is the time to get busy with cool flowers. And then in a few weeks, we'll start starting our warm season stuff. So now is the time to focus on cool and warm comes in the future. It's still too early for most of us. Um, to actually start those. All right, friends, until we meet again, ciao.